Last one. Do you support Clean Dream and Promise Act? Mm. Yes. So let me say a little bit about this. So the on the campaign trail, I talked a lot about my support for dreamers. Um, here in Orange County, the average age that a dreamer came to this country was eight years old. So that's who we're talking about. We're talking about people who came here as children um, to this country and who have done what the government asked in terms of coming forward, identifying themselves, paying taxes, staying in school, staying on the right side of our laws, and working toward a path for citizenship. So we have a lot of dreamers um, here in the district, estimated about 10,000 people, again, children now becoming young adults, um, including a number of them at UC Irvine. And as a professor on that campus, I had the chance to see day in and day out the fact that these dreamers are excellent students, they are hard workers, and they have a real potential to add to our economy and to our society. So I do support the dreamers. HR 6, the so-called Dream and Promise Act, is different than the Dream Acts that we have seen introduced in prior Congresses, because it covers both pathway to citizenship for dreamers, but also addresses those with temporary protected status, a different group of immigrants who came under a different set of circumstances. So where we are with this in Congress is the bill is in the process, the leadership is in the process of trying to figure out what next steps might be for this bill. And typically what happens with a bill is first it goes to committee. And in this case, that will be the Judiciary Committee, which has primary responsibility for immigration. Um, and it will also potentially go to the Education and Labor Committee, in part because it involves so many of our students and so many more people in our workforce with regard to those with both dreamer status and temporary protected status. I am not on either committee, so the first step is to let those committees do their work. There'll be questions, there could very well be amendments. One of the commitments we as Democrats made when we took control of the House after this election was to return to what's called regular order. And what regular order means, for those of you who don't know, is it means not cutting off the conversation. So this, is, this means giving up some of the control that leadership might have instead to the diversity of voices in our Congress, both on the left and on the right, but also within the Democratic Party. So this bill likely will see a number of amendments. I think some of them are likely to come from Democratic colleagues. I think some of them are likely to come from Republican colleagues. And one of the concerns I have about this bill, as it stands today, if this bill were to come up for a vote on the House floor, I would vote yes. I will tell you that I am concerned, very concerned, that by the time this bill gets to a vote, it could have a number of poison pill amendments. It could have amendments from both Democrats and Republicans that I don't believe support our Orange County values and are antithetical to what I've heard from constituents. So because we don't have final language mm -hmm. at this point, I'm hoping that this bill does what it promises to do, which is to give status to dreamers and put them on a path to citizenship. But I'm gonna be watching very carefully, and I think this is gonna be a tough, rancorous process on both sides of the aisle to get this through. And this bill is different than the Clean Dream Acts. Clean, clean by the way, clean dreamers just means that the bill only addresses adjusting status for dreamers, as opposed to dreamers being integrated into a more comprehensive immigration reform package. So this bill is different um, than those in past Congresses, and this is the first time we're gonna have a markup of a bill where we can see a lot of different kinds of amendments come in. So you know, I take listening to constituents very seriously. About 50% of the calls, and we're careful to screen for who's a constituent and who's not as we get these letters and phone calls and emails. 50% of our friends and neighbors support this bill, and 50% of our community does not. Mm -hmm. That is the reality of the voices that I am hearing. And so this is something that I am weighing as I move forward, and I've been very, 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 very helpful 
to meet with a number of folks in the community and for my staff to be able to meet with a number of folks in the community, including groups like the Korean Resource Center, to hear their perspectives on this bill. But we should know as we move forward with this debate, as Congress moves forward with this debate, this is one where our community is deeply divided. And we have a lot of work to do to try to create political support for our dreamers. And that's part of why I'm committed to coming here today and continuing this conversation. And we need to find ways to continue a productive conversation on this topic. We want our dreamers not just to be citizens, but to be able to live in a safe and respectful way in our community. And that involves not just passing a law, that involves changing people's attitudes and giving them the facts about how dreamers help our country become better. Thank you. And before I answer the question, I do want to, uh, one of the things that Katie mentioned was the respect of each other while we're here. And I was at an uh, orientation where a gentleman asked the audience two questions, and I'm going to ask you the same two questions. Raise your hand if you love somebody who has opposing political views. <laughs> Good to see you. A handful. Second question. Who here thinks our country would be better served with only one party? <laughs> A few hands. Actually, I do agree with that. But let's be honest. We from both sides. Yes, great. Right. Point being, right. our democracy is best when we have different point of views debating and trying to understand and finding the common ground to move ourselves forward. So as you go on in your communities to talk about issues, please keep in mind uh, how important it is to understand first, uh, seek that understanding as you try to find the common ground. To answer the question, yes, I will sign uh, on to HR 6, uh, the, the up-down vote on uh, the Dreamers Bill. I do recall, it wasn't long ago before we were elected, that my recollection was that Speaker Ryan and uh, O'Connell uh, were, some, were supposed to put it on the floor for the straight up down vote, and it never happened. And we need the opportunity to do that because the dreamers are in our community. They have been, as Katie pointed out, many of them only know this country. They serve in our uh, law enforcement, they serve in our military, they serve in our schools, they serve beside us, in our communities, with our families, because they are part of our community. And they deserve, they deserve our support. And as said, I also was very clear on the campaign trail. We had an incredibly missed opportunity in 2013, and that was Senate Bill 744. Uh, that was the, the comprehensive immigration reform bill that was drafted by the famous Gang of Eight, four Democrats and four Republicans, including the late great John McCain. And those eight Republicans uh, made compromises, which is again what our founders wanted us to do. That legislation passed the Senate, two to one bipartisan support, including Republican senators from southeastern border states. And it went to the House of Representatives where it had majority support and where President Obama would have signed it. It never came out of the House because the Tea Party told Boehner, if you let it on the floor, you'll no longer be Speaker of the House. He never let it out of committee Good. to even get on the floor to be voted on. And that's part of the reason we ran for office, is that's what's wrong with Washington. We had a good idea, we had bipartisan support, and a small faction drove off the cliff the comprehensive legislation that would have abrogated the, many of the discussions we're having here today regarding immigration. And we need to get back to the common sense, common ground, get the rhetoric out of here of, of, of build the wall, Mexico is going to pay for it type stuff. Because if we actually have an honest conversation about how to address uh, uh, immigration and border port security, you will find bipartisan support. Thank you. Question. No, it was a great question. By the way, Katie, your, your constituents have phenomenal penmanship. Um, <laughs> what are you doing to stop ICE from 